Welcome back. Flash estimates from the Singapore Real Estate Exchange shows that the number of HDB resale flats transacted in 2013 is the weakest in six years at 14,314 units. Analysts say decline is no surprise as property curbs continue to bite. So here's a look at some numbers. SRX says that 908 HDB resale flats were sold in December. That's down 9.6% 9, 9 on month. And market watchers say the slower sales could be the result of the festive season and they expect transaction volume to remain muted in January as well. And meanwhile, overall HDB resale prices fell 0.5% on month in December and property agency ERA projects HDB resale prices could fall by 5 to 8% for the full year uh, but transaction volume, it says, could start to pick up in June. Um, with prices stabilising, we are hopeful that um, more buyers will come back to the resale market because you don't have to wait um, the three years for the BTO flats to be completed. So we may expect more buyers coming back into the market perhaps in the second half um, of uh, 2014. So to discuss the issue is Thomas Tan, Executive Director of Real Estate Agency Remax Singapore. So Thomas, uh, thanks for joining us today. So we heard comments from Eugene earlier saying he expects more buyers to come back to the resale market in the second half of this year. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you probably will, will want to see that happening because once we have seen that the government has already rolled out quite a fair bit of their BTO flats, which has taken demand away from quite a fair bit of the resale market. So um, what Eugene mentioned is probably, I hold a similar view, is that in the second half of uh, this year, you probably see that the people who couldn't wait for the BTO to be ready, they'll probably dive into the resale market to pick up maybe choice units even. Okay, so uh, what do you expect the resale transactional volume for the whole of 2014 to be compared to 2013, which is expected to be uh, a historical low? Yep, um, this year we, we probably moved about 14,000 odd units. Yeah. Um, you probably see it hovering slightly above, maybe at, at, a, at a cap, maybe at, at a maximum cap of 20,000 mm -hmm. right up there. Uh, but I don't see anything beyond that uh, for this year. What about uh, price growth? Are you expecting any price growth this year or none at all? Or like Eugene said, perhaps in maybe a 5 to 8% dip? Uh, I think it will be a year of caution, of stagnation. So I would, I would think your prices will probably be hovering at the same rate. Um, I don't see it on, very much on the upside anymore. Okay. Probably you may see it moderating, but maybe not. Uh, 5 to 8%. I would think at a cap of 5% max. All right, Thomas, uh, one moment. Let's have a look at the COVs and how they moved in December. Uh, looking at flash estimates from the Singapore Real Estate Exchange again, cash over valuation premiums for resale HDB flats continued to plummet in December. We have the numbers for you. At $5,000, December's medium COV is the lowest since June 2009 when it hit a low of $3,000. Now, this $5,000 also a 37.5% month-on-month -month decline compared to November's $8,000. Our data from 10 real estate agencies shows that the number of transactions done below valuation went up between November and December by 25%. And that equates to HDB real sale transactions with negative COVs in December rounding off at 20.2% or 1 in 5. Opongo, as you can see there, bore the brunt of such sales, followed by Sengkang and then Woodlands. And the quarterly overall median HDB valuation fell in the third quarter to the fourth quarter in 2013, falling $3,000, uh, settling at $435,000 in Q4. It's a double whammy with where the valuations also come down, right? So uh, a seller must seriously manage the expectations. And certainly this is uh, normalizing. Uh, it's an engineered soft landing in terms of having more uh, moderate price expectations uh, in the market. So some home sellers that our reporter spoke to today say that the drop in COV uh, has affected the type of home that they want to buy. COV for this uh, unit I'm actually selling is uh, 17,000. Back then, I think it can fetch easily about thirty to 35000 The first thing is going to impact is actually the renovation for my new house. When I already know that the COV is going to be reduced, I'm looking for the unit which suit my uh, this uh, decor design, my this uh, decor idea, so that I can fork out uh, lesser when it comes to renovation. 
So Thomas, you know, uh, buyers or sellers they're having to rein in the expectations, yeah. So if HDB resale prices continue to slide, what kind of knock-on effect do you see it having on the private property market? Well, you can clearly see now that if the resale prices continue to moderate, the COV continues to drop, which means the overall price that the person can sell will probably have to moderate as well. His expectations will be curbed in that sense. So he probably have to sell it at a lower than what he expected. With that, he may not necessarily make as much profit as he wants to, yeah. which will tell you that uh, if he wants, is thinking of moving on to the private property market, he may have to reconsider his options now because he does not make so much in the HDB resale flat. He probably don't have enough funds or may not necessarily have enough funds to move to a unit that he wants in right. the private market. So this is the effect generally. So January last year, COV $35,000. And then, in Jan and then in December, it's $5,000. So uh, your outlook for 2014, is it going to be a question of how low is it going to go? Well, you have already seen the effects in some of the estates like Woodland, Sengkang, Pongo, that it's already gone below the valuation prices. So that will tell you this is something moving forward that uh, in, in a very broad base sense, it's going to be very close to zero COV, okay, or maybe slightly below COV in those estates mentioned. Um, but having said that, um, you, can't, you can't necessarily say that all estates will be zero COV because you have estates like Bishan or Tiong Bahru, uh, which are typically uh, pretty sought after and centralised in their location. So these estates will still command a, a slight premium in that sense. So you mentioned the ones earlier like uh, Pongol, Woodland, Sengkang, the ones that transacted below valuation. Why these areas in particular? Uh, you, you, in the locality portion, you will know that they are actually located in the outskirts. Uh, Woodlands is uh, one of the biggest estates in Singapore. Um, Sengkang and Pongo are maturing estates. That means, you, especially for Pongo, you see a lot of flats maturing, reaching their minimum occupation period of five years. That's why this contributes to quite a fair bit of supply coming to the market. So once there's competition where supply is concerned, definitely the prices have to moderate to meet the, you know, the, the supply that's in the market. All right, thank you, Thomas. Very nice talking to you. Thanks for coming today. And that was Thomas on the outlook for the HDB resale market for 2014. Uh, let's have a quick look at